The Vice Chairman, Federal University of Agriculture, Delta, Professor King, fellow represented today by Professor Akeke Jo Santos Yemi, Fishery Department, Funa, to be this famous. Let's put your hands together for them.
many others have been actively involved in the process of hosting the conference, including our first female president, Dikimet Uluke Ariola FFS, former president and current chairman, Council of Fellows, Dr. Haba Abulai FFS, former vice president, my brother, Dr. Olami Wadi Badmos, many of our members and fellows not speaking of our academic institutions, Nigeria Institute for Oceanography and Marine Research in Oma, and the National Institute for Fresh Water Fisheries Research Ministry, Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Utafuna, as well as the exchange partners, students, corporate members, and so many others. Indeed, the world of aquaculture society is home for the fishery society of Nigeria and vice versa. I thank God that he has crafted efforts with success to vast such a conference at a time in which the world seeks solutions to eradicate poverty, end hunger, and boost economic development through enhancement of the blue economy with fish and other blue fields focus. The theme of the conference, Sustainable Aquaculture Development for livelihoods in West Africa, reminds us that fish production through aquaculture is in the making nature, may we conduct our research and fish production sustainably so that the future of the unborn generations will still have sufficient supply of fish for food, medicine, recreation, and income for thousands of aquaculture practitioners all over West Africa and beyond. As we continue with the activities during this conference, may we find solutions to the national issues of imbalance in fish trade Answers to the lack of diversification of the fish species from the aquaculture industry in West Africa. This will be aimed at exploring the rich diversity of aquatic organisms at our disposal and not waiting till the uh, not waiting they are till they are all most extinct in the natural water body before we start thinking of culturing them. In this regard, therefore, the Fisheries Society of Nigeria as the apex professional non-state actor of the fisheries sector in Nigeria seeks to encourage the world of our culture society to work with us and other partners in developing and introducing at least five new commercially viable aquaculture candidates in the industry. In the next couple of years, these could be selected from different classes of groups of organisms like algae, seaweed, crustaceans, mollusks, fin fish, to add to the list of tilapia, catfish, gymnatus, eterotes, and others in the West African sub region. The World Aquaculture Society has showcased its prowess across continents, and we anticipate it having similar or even greater achievements on African continent. Faison, we continue to collaborate with the World Aquaculture Society, and we expect your participation at our upcoming annual conference and general meeting to be held in Bayesda State from 13th to 17th November 2023. With the theme, Nursing Fisheries Resources in the Blue Economy of Nigeria. Please plan to attend and have a feel of the hospitable people and aquatic splendor of Yenagua and its environs while enriching yourself through cheering knowledge at the conference. Please let me rank up on this note. On behalf of the National Executive Council, the Council of Fellows and members of the Fisheries Society of Nigeria, I welcome all the delegates to this epoch-making event in Abel Kuta, wishing you all fruitful deliberations. Thank you and God bless. This is from Dr.
a Benin J. Anza, FFS, the National President of Fisheries Society of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director of Fisheries of the State, giving me that one well. Together for our work today. But this is okay. Up next is me. I can invite to come and give you in a two, three minutes Google message. Uh, Steve or Kelly, the CEO of Quantic Hub, Africa Network, every represented by the technical director of fish business, Mrs. Edna Dionis. Please put your together for her. I should look forward to give you a Google message right away. away. Everything about today's fish, fish, fish. And I, I ordered for something to just eat this morning. I saw someone eating fish. They now come and give me egg and, egg and meat. Egg and meat is the fish. Well. So, so uh, these are the several reasons 
why Kelapa industry presents a unique opportunity for West Africa. Okay? Firstly, it is a sustainable way to produce fish. Unlike traditional fishing, this is often associated with overfishing and habitat destruction. Secondly, tilapia farming is an efficient way to produce fish with the highest stocking density than traditional fishing. Modern fish can be produced in a similar area. This translates the higher yields and more cost-effective fish production. Thirdly, tilapia farming has the potential to create jobs and stimulate economic growth in the West African region. With the demand of fish on the rise, tilapia farming presents an opportunity to create jobs in the aquaculture industry. From farm workers to processors and distributors. This can be significantly, uh, to, this can be contribute significantly to the economic development of the region. I will just tell you briefly, uh, there is another challenge. Challenge is uh, the inadequate infrastructure which affects the transport storage of course transport storage of the fish to address this we need to invest in the development of cold storage and transport infrastructures which can help to reduce post harvest losses and increase the shelf life of the fish additionally there is a need to address the lack of technical expertise in the industry while the industry is gaining momentum in some parts of West Africa, there is still significant knowledge, knowledge gap that needs to be filled. We need to invest in research and development to improve fish farming practices and develop new technologies that can enhance the production. Let us seize this opportunity to hold meaningful conversations and deliberations over the next couple of days to transform the aquaculture industry in West Africa and secure a better future generations to come. Thank you very much. Good morning and good luck to all of us. Let's put some together for how it's again. And now, Jesse. Okay, we still have one. We still have um, one more good message. May I invite uh, the representative of the Chamber of Aquaculture Ghana, Mr. John Jones. Let's put that together for him. Mr. John has come to give the good will message all the way from Ghana. Accra. Is it Accra? Who must? Wow. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to stand on the established protocol already. And uh, I bring you greetings from Ghana, your brothers next door. So, um, on behalf of the Ghana Aquaculture Association and the Chamber of Aquaculture Ghana, I would like to solidarize with the West Africa um, Regional uh, Office of WAS. We are very glad to be part of it. The work has collaborated with us in doing a lot of things. We had our very first conference uh, in a virtual form two years ago, and we are happy to support this in Nigeria. So Nigeria happens to be um, the second highest producing farm fish in Africa. And um, we follow suit, and we share very similar uh, challenges, and we hope that our solutions should be similar. As we deliberate here, we are hoping that we share and come up with very fruitful deliberation to make sure that our businesses become very profitable to us and to the experts, the professionals and the practitioners that we all advance our industry and we become as a region a dominant force in the era of Africa. On behalf of this, I wish to say thank you very much to all of us. Did I hear you say you bring greetings from our brothers in Ghana? Okay. One of our sisters. <laughs> and our, our aunties and grandma. You got my point. You got my point. <laughs> All right. 
Right. Thank you very much. Up next, I invite to give a good will message in two, three minutes, um, the Nigerian President, our fish and uh, regional treasurer of the society for which we are here. Please make welcome Mrs. Fumi Lola Shemika. Please give her a generous welcome. Round of applause. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Um, observing existing protocol to be established, I would like to quickly just correct the name of the organization. It's called African Women Fish Processors and Traders Network, and it's called um, All Fish Net. So, our uh, MC, can you note that? Thank you. On behalf of the organizing committee, it is with great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to everyone that has come in here far and wide attending this remarkable aquaculture conference. It is an honor to gather here today where our shared passion for aquatic ecosystems and sustainable practices unite us in the pursuit of a better future. Aquaculture plays a vital role in addressing the ever-increasing global demand for seafood while promoting environmental stewardship. This conference serves as an exceptional platform for experts, researchers, industry leaders, and policy makers to exchange knowledge, share groundbreaking advancement, and forge collaborations that will shape the future of aquaculture in Nigeria and Africa and West Africa as a whole. As we gather under this common roof, let us celebrate the remarkable achievements made in the field of aquaculture, the contributions made by each one of us, and all that we have brought us closer to overcoming the challenges we face, including ensuring food security, reducing pressure on wild fish stocks, and safeguarding the delicate balance of our aquatic ecosystems. The significance of this conference cannot be understated, just as the theme clearly states, sustainable aquaculture development for livelihoods in West Africa. It is through collective efforts and collaborative initiatives that we can transform our vision for sustainable aquaculture into a tangible reality by harnessing innovative technologies, embracing best practices, and cultivating a strong network of like-minded individuals. We have the power to create a positive impact that extends far beyond this conference walls. Like I would always like to say, nothing stops you unless you stop yourself. I encourage you all to engage in vibrant discussions, attend insightful sessions, and seize the countless networking opportunities that lie ahead. Let us all learn from one another, exchange ideas, and invite the spark of innovation that will shape the future of aquaculture, ensuring its long-term viability for generations to come. May this conference foster our environment of open dialogue, inspiration, and cooperation. May it serve as a catalyst for groundbreaking research, revolutionary ideas, and transformative actions. And most importantly, may it instill in each one of us an unwavering commitment to the sustainable development of aquaculture in Nigeria and beyond Nigeria, which is driven by a genuine concern for our planet's well-being. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the participants, sponsors, and organizers who have made this event possible. Together, let us embark on this journey of knowledge, collaboration, and shared responsibility as we work towards a thriving and sustainable future for aquaculture. I wish you all a successful and enlightening conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is from Lola Shemika, representing our next. Please give a round of applause for our one second. Yes, may I invite you kindly come to still be a goodwill message. The president elect, African Chapter, World of Aquaculture Society, Deacons, Foluke, and Lola. Please put your hands together for our president elect as he comes up majestically.
to give her goodwill message on this August auspicious, auspicious, and illustrious occasion. Can I hear you jam your hands together and present the mouth of the stage? President elect you welcome. My blessing. Is this to be a president elect? Yeah, I know for the two president elect. She and Thank you. 
the structure. And we desire to keep having such regional conferences and events on a regular basis, delivering to our mandate of seeking solutions to have an aquaculture industry that is sustainable on all fronts. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Aquaculture Society African Chapter is for all of us. Our desire is to connect each and every one of you with no one left behind in our endeavor to organize effective communication platforms thus contributing to the progressive and sustainable development of aquaculture throughout the region and continent at large. I call upon all of you to join World Aquaculture Society and be active in this endeavor. I believe we are all aware of the many structures of aquaculture challenges caused by the over the past for the past few years, the prestigious and renowned World Aquaculture Global Conferences were not spared by the pandemic. But thank God, we are back to meetings again. We are aware many delegates from Nigeria have intended to attend the first Aquaculture Africa Conference, which took place in Alexandria, Egypt, in March 2022, but regrettably could not do so due to visa complexities. Nevertheless, the event was a great success. We are now bearing up to host the second Aquaculture Africa Conference in Lusaka, Zambia, in November this year, and hopefully the third conference in Accra, Ghana, in 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, we understand Nigeria as the second biggest aquaculture producer in Africa, at the end of 276,000 metric tons, valued at some $750 million in 2021. This accounts for nearly 20% of the continent's total aquaculture production. It is a country that has, over the years, weathered through and addressed several value chain dynamics especially in catfish and tilapia subsectors. Being the largest producer of catfish in Africa and a key player globally, there is a lot to learn from the country, especially the advancement of the small to medium scale aquaculture value chain, where youth and women are also active. Nigeria is blessed to also have many active universities, and research institutes of fisheries and aquaculture, where many scientists and academics have over the years been the backbone of the World Aquaculture Society membership. One of the renowned institutions, University of Ibadan, is on course to be confirmed as one of African Union Center of Excellence of fisheries and aquaculture. I think Nigeria deserves an applause for that. As World Aquaculture Society, we view this second regional conference on aquaculture in West Africa 2023 as one of many areas we can collaborate with our partners to serve aquaculture in the region and continentally. In this regard, we are progressing on many initiatives which include more conferences, joint research programs, training and capacity building events, focused webinars, general networking, and other meetings of behavior. We are also, of course, developing a strong World Aquaculture Society student program, which will be a key feature during the upcoming annual Aquaculture Africa conferences. I know some of you from Nigeria are already registered to attend the upcoming World Aquaculture 2023 conference coming up in two weeks' time in Norway, Australia, 29th May to 1st of June 2023. And then for the African continent, we have the second Aquaculture Africa 
conference in 2023, Africa 2023, scheduled for Zambia on 13 to 16 November 2023. Thousands of delegates from around the world are expected to converge in Zambia with an international exhibition plan featuring over 100 foods. By the way, Zambia has relatively easier visa access for Nigerian nationals. Be sure to register for this event. There's just something for everyone there. Of course, there are a number of other World Aquaculture Society regional and global events planned for 2023 and 2024. Please visit the World Aquaculture Society website for more information. And as already announced, the third Aquaculture Africa Conference, AFRA 24, is scheduled in our beloved West Africa region, in Ghana, of course, a date and venue to be announced in 2024. This international conference in Ghana will be held under the stewardship of our own Poluke Areola, who will take over the presidency of the World Aquaculture African Chapter from November this year for a two-year time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am aware of many challenges which our aquaculture sector has faced in recent years. My thoughts and prayers are still with the farmers in the region and continentally who experienced unprecedented disruption because of recent flooding, drought, diseases, and other adverse acts of nature. The World Aquaculture Society, through its research and development, information generation, and exchange, will continue to be active in delivering scientific information that will contribute to the mitigation of such disasters and many other challenges. Let me end by recognizing and thanking my World Aquaculture Society Regional Director in West Africa, Mr. Larry Badmond, for his leadership in this region. Can you please stand up and thank you, Mr. Larry Badmond, can you stand up? Please, and let's give him a round of ovation. For his leadership in the region, Professor Festus Antioch Dogo, the World Aquaculture Society, African Charter Secretary for chairing the conference, and our own Polite Areola, our president elect, for all support. The conference organizing team will appreciate your support, and the World Aquaculture Society membership and partners in Nigeria and West Africa at large for being loyal to the World Aquaculture Society and for collaborating in the delivery of education and capacity building through webinar sessions, regional conferences, and general active social networking. Many times go to Ala Aqua, our chapter founding board sponsor, for supporting this event again. Let's give Ada Aqua a round of applause, please. The World Aquaculture Society African Chapter commits to work with you on this journey, aiming to create a valuable platform for information exchange and networking for aquaculture actors, thus hopefully creating the necessary critical mass for aqua feed value chains. We are overly grateful to the government of Nigeria for supporting this event and the government of Ogun State, our all weather partners and sponsors, such as the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta Funab, Chamber of Aquaculture, Ghana, World Aquatic Veterinary Medicine Association, which AU 
development authorities from Nepal in the Partnership for Africa to mention a few, and this should be read in proper manner. Thank you. Lastly, I am informed His Excellency Chief Olusha Obasanjo, former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who resides in this region and also an active player in the aquaculture sector and who has been represented today by the Permanent Secretary, State Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Adiobo, has blessed and supported this occasion. Can we give a round of applause? <laughs> we wish to thank him immensely for all support. Perhaps I should also mention in gratitude that the Nepal Now African Union Development Agency which is founded and championed back in past few decades, is housing the Secretariat of the African Chapter of the World Aquaculture Society at its headquarters in South Africa. Can we give another round of applause? The World Aquaculture Society salutes you, sir, your excellency, and I hope you will deliver our message to him. Thank you, sir. I hope to physically meet some of you at the at one of the upcoming conferences, hopefully the second aquaculture Africa conference in Zambia in November this year. But I wish to end by encouraging you to join World Aquaculture Society. If you are not one of us yet, it's good to be a member of our noble society or renew your membership such that as a dedicated and organized community, we can serve our sector diligently to sustainability. Thank you all and wishing you a fruitful conference in the coming days. Dr. John Walakira, President, World Aquaculture, African Chapter, Uganda. Thank you all for listening. Please let's put hands together for her once again. Well delivered lecture on behalf of the president. Thank you very much. Up next, we would like to have um, Jokra, the last Goodwill message, coming from the chief of party, USAID, Feed the Future. Please make welcome Mr. Lawrence AC. Applaud is for Louis, s'il vous plaît. So in the next two, three minutes, we'll be done with that, and then we'll go to the keynote addresses, of which we have just two, and there will also be brief, brief, and we're done for the day. Welcome. Please permit me to hide under the existing protocol. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. So, um... This goodwill message is from the USIDP, the Future Nigeria Business Investment Activity, on behalf of our Chief of Party, Mr. Limide Oji. The USID funded Feed the Future Nigeria Business Investment Activity is delighted to join the World Aquaculture Society West Africa and the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyopite. Abiyopita, with all other public and private sector actors in this second regional conference on agriculture for livelihoods in West Africa. We thank you for the opportunity to join this regional discourse to provide workable solutions to West Africans' agriculture needs. This conference resonates strongly with events around the world and points out to us the need to focus our energy on strengthening the nation's agricultural sector in the post-COVID economy with associated food crisis all over the world. Our participation in this conference, along with our activities work in Nigeria, reinforces our activities' commitment to strengthening the country's agribusiness enabling environment in response to the local and global food problem. The Feed the Future Nigeria Agribusiness Investment Activities is a five-year USID-funded 
program which aim to strengthen the enabling environment for agribusiness finance and investment in Nigeria. Our activity focuses on four interrelated components, improving the enabling environment for agricultural sector growth, broadening access to finance by mitigating credit risk of agribusinesses, promoting and facilitating investment opportunities for agribusinesses to expand and scale up operations. And, so, and finally, sustainably enhancing the performance of agribusiness MSMEs. So far, we have facilitated the review and approval of 14 agricultural-related policies in Nigeria, including two aquaculture policies in Ebony and Niger, Niger states. We have also facilitated over $200 million in agriculture-related debt and non-debt financing to over 15,000 MSMEs. Across the activity for car value chains of rice, maize, soybean, carpet, carpet, and aquaculture in seven states, including Benue, Cross River Delta, Ebony, Kaduna, KB, and Niger State. Some of these MSMEs were aquaculture related businesses. Our activity participation in this conference highlights our commitment to collaborate and partner with other public and private sector actors in Nigeria to improve the agribusiness enabling environment and support critical infrastructural provision and technological innovation and policy trust of organizations like the World Aquaculture Society. We commend the efforts of the organization in organizing this conference and we believe that the discussions here will go a long way to transform Nigeria and West Africa agriculture industry to result in significant economic growth. We remain committed to fostering more collaborations and partnerships with the last part of the project within the last part of the project that will improve the agribusiness agri and environment and support critical infrastructural provision in the aquaculture sector. Thank you very much. Mr. Lawrence is the Deputy Chief of Party. Thank you very much, Mr. Isi, from Yusuf. Uh, I'd like to announce the arrival of um, the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture Justice, Dr. Adeola Adeshina. Please put your hands together for him. He's standing. Is either standing or sitting, depending on how you see it, in capacity as a representative, as an able representative of um, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief, His Excellency Chief Dr. Olusegun Adeno of Passenger, GC Eva. Please put your hands together for him. Oh, the governor. Oh, he's wearing that cap. All right, so standing on behalf of sitting. I should say stand, it's not standing sitting on behalf of His Excellency, the Governor of uh, Ogun State, Dr. Abiola. Please put your hands together for him. Please, Dr. Abiola. Okay, um, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to give a keynote address today. Um, it will just last for 20 minutes, but it's going to be brilliant, vibrant, and articulate. Please make welcome the Special Advisor on Agriculture and Natural Resources to Katsina State Governor and the Chairman of Fellows Faisal, Dr. Abba Yaku Abdullahi, FFS. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward today to give his keynote address all the way from Katsina State. And it's okay, it's okay. Is it okay? Okay, why do I start? Okay, I'm not going to This is okay. Okay, distinguished uh, delegates, uh, colleagues, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate my multilingual rib cracking MC who facilitated <laughs> <laughs> that in the initial introduction, he made a mistake of uh, calling me social advisor to Cardinal State Government. Is to state government. And, uh, but that is not important here. 
what is more relevant is my position as a former Vice on President 2010 to 2014 and also currently Chairman of the Council of Fellows, which is Society of Nigeria. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to present uh, this uh, topic, which I am honored, which is the fisheries policy and agriculture policy in Nigeria. Okay? Now, um, with this, uh, by the way, introduction, everybody knows all this information about uh, the supply gap. We have about 2.6 million tons and uh, all the other things. Um, and uh, but the issue is there is a potential for Nigeria based on an analysis if we, if we can have one, uh, uh, use the potential of 25% of our water bodies, we should be able to produce enough fish to fill in the gap so that we can stop uh, importation completely in Nigeria. That's what it takes. But all these things cannot happen unless we have a right policy that can uh, give chance to most, especially the private sector, to do all these kind of things. Then, but the uh, responsibility for agriculture regulatory duties and all matters of fisheries, as we know, happens at the federal level, at the state level. At the federal level, under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources, then uh, under the purview of Federal Department of Fisheries, then in the state government, uh, it's usually Department of Fisheries, either at the Ministry of Agriculture or Ministry of Livestock or Ministry of uh, uh, Environment, as the case may be in different states. So you can see the kind of uh, uh, disjointed uh, framework for uh, the policy for, for managing management of this sector in, in, in the country. Then you have also other uh, relevant ministries or agencies that are responsible for implemented agriculture development, like the NAVDAC, the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Water Resources, all have policies which are going to innovate here to see which ones are affecting the development of agriculture. You have also the non-state actors, go back, go back. We have also the non-state actors like the Fisher Society of Nigeria, like our Catfish Farmers Association, even the West African uh, World Agriculture Society, the uh, National Fisheries Association, most of these uh, non-state actors are mostly concerned in fish trade, processing and marketing, and uh, advocacy, environment, finance, food security research, and capacity. They are therefore fundamental in the ensuring the sustainable development of the fisheries and aquaculture in the country. Next. Now, we also have research institutes, uh, uh, research, under research subsector within the aquaculture. We have two major research institutes, which is NIOMA, which is responsible for all marine and brackish water research. Then you have the NIFRI and NIOBUSA, instead of freshwater fisheries, that have the mandate of all freshwater fisheries resources. Then you have other institutions like the universities uh, that produce high level manpower in the, in the aquaculture sector. You have the polytechnics and the monotechnics that produce middle level manpower. But by the time you get this, uh, this uh, presentation, you should be able to see the number of universities that are involved in fisheries, in aquaculture de uh, development, and all the others that issue diploma, higher diploma, and also certification in aquaculture uh, uh, capacity development, human capital development. Okay, and there, but there are two, uh, two specialized colleges, colleges of fisheries, one in Lagos, uh, and Nyoma, the other one in uh, New Busa with a branch at Baga, I don't know whether it's operational now because of this issue of security around uh, at Baga, but I know it used to exist there uh, before the advent of Boko Haram. Okay, next. Now, finance. This is another uh, management uh, framework that ensures the development of uh, aquaculture and fisheries in Nigeria. And this creates a linkage between the smallholder or maybe the farmers with the financial institutions. You have the Anko borrowers uh, facilities that include under this financial arrangement, you have the Anko borrowers from the central bank, which luckily they have identified agriculture as one of the key uh, areas that which they, they can finance. You have Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry, you have the commercial banks. But unfortunately, most in most cases, commercial banks are not accessible uh, for farmers and most uh, medium scale farmers because of the issue of collateral, which is a big, going to be a big problem. It's always a big problem for farmers to access finances from these commercial banks. That's why most of them you find that they go back to Bank of Agriculture, Bank of uh, uh, then Central Bank, uh, Bank of Borrowers Program. Next. Now, let's go to the synopsis of this uh, framework relevant to the aquaculture in Nigeria. There are copious issues, policies, and programs that have been 
documented over the years in Nigeria that manages the aquaculture uh, subsector. One of the most important ones that I, I want to highlight about seven or eight of them, first, in the fisheries and aquaculture policy of Nigeria. The draft fisheries of aquaculture policy of Nigeria was formulated to the overall goal of achieving one, increased domestic fish production from all sources of sustainable and, and uh, at the level of self-sufficiency, support and appropriate fisheries gov uh, governance and private sector investment, strengthening fisheries professional organizations, promote leakages for synergy and uh, private sector uh, uh, empowerment, improve on the socio-economic life and fishing communities, affordable by providing apostles, affordable inputs, uh, equipment, facilities, credit assistance, establish and develop nat uh, national fish production guidelines for capture, culture, and post-harvest through quality control and certified fish uh, inspectors, promote code of conduct for resource fishes, and practi uh, practice of environmentally friendly techniques. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, all the objectives of that uh, fishes plan, which has been formulated, but the issue is whether it is being implemented or not, that's another different issue that we need to uh, discuss now. Now the second thing is, uh, the second instrument, the Fisheries Act 2014, which was commissioned by the Fisheries, uh, by the European uh, Economic Commission. This uh, Fisheries Act provides a comprehensive legislation for Nigeria fisheries sector, uh, comprising, uh, comprising of marine, inland, and aquaculture. And the objectives of the Act are optimum utilization of long-term conservation management and sustainable development of fisheries resources and ecosystems, all fisheries, uh, fisheries waters, recognizing the need of present and future generations to utilize those resources to achieve food and nutritional uh, security, economic growth, and human resource development. And the strategies under this vision are next. Uh, there are about three major strategies. First is the establishment of fisheries commission. I'm glad that I have seen uh, Ghana representation here because they already have a fisheries commission. Probably, probably maybe we'll have a, a, a session before the end of this uh, uh, conference so that they can give us their experience in the Fisheries Commission. Because there is a lot of misunderstanding here in the talk of the Fisheries Commission. So people will say, what will be the federal department of fisheries doing or whatever. But there are many countries that have, that have Fisheries Commission and it's working on very well. So this Fisheries Commission is an avenue uh, to regulate and manage the exploitation of conservation uh, man uh, and management of sustainable development of fisheries resources as well as making recommendations to the Honorable Minister of Agriculture. Then the second frame, uh, uh, the second structure is the Fisheries Stakeholders Forum. Under this Act, uh, there is a, a provision for establishment of this Fisheries Stakeholders Forum, which involves all the stakeholders, most especially in the agriculture sector. We have the farmers, the non-state actors, and this is basically just for dispute resolution and conflict resolution within the agriculture sector or fisheries sector. So let's add make this provision. This, the, the second uh, instrument is the fishing development fund, which is, will ensure the sustainability. We all know that most projects, when they start, because of a uh, lack of funds or whatever, maybe drying enough of the sources of funds from international development partners, the whole project stops. But in this act, there is a provision of how you, they can generate money so that continuation and management of that sector can go unhindered. And this is true by. Uh, uh, on damage, uh, fees that are be realized for damages, cost of compensation granted by courts and the government in respect of actions under this act. And there are various actions, like fishing in the non trolling zone, the troller can be seized. If you pollute water, you pay. If you do all kinds of things that, has, uh, cont that goes contrary to the instrument of this act, you pay. And this is the kind of uh, money that can be used in the sustaining this uh, arrangement. Now, the next one, which is uh, fisheries, in, uh, fisheries Act of 2017. The Act provides for good aquaculture practices, international standards for traceability, certification, permission of established fish farms, registration of fish farms, management, monitoring and use of raw materials and waste from farms, aquatic uh, animal health, and fish quality uh, assurance. So all this under this Fisheries Act, you see, uh, we keep on bringing this act, bringing the development plan, duplicating the instrument within each of these various acts. So there is this which we are going to make a recommendation at the end, how to sit down and harmonize. And I hope the current policy that is going to be launched on the 24th of May in Abuja will take care of all these issues. 
Now, there is also the Aquaculture Development Plan, which is also another plan. It addresses social services in fish protein supplies through aquaculture, its involvement of public and private uh, sector active participation, demand-driven research on fisheries, strategies of collaboration, support uh, sustainable uh, uh, use of water bodies, application of biotechnology, utilization of agro-industrial products, uh, formation and development of fisheries, uh, associations and cooperatives. So this is another plan. Then the, the plan was also reviewed under the National Aquaculture Development Plan 2011-2014. And the objective is to develop sustainable aquaculture, just like the first one, sustainable uh, con uh, continuous growth of small and medium enterprises, creating opportunities in large scale, and appropriate framework for aquaculture to address this. And the expected output was 25 to 75% increase in aquaculture production per annum, 25 to 50% increase in consumption in aquaculture, all these targets were set. However, there is some glimmer of hope under this because the mechanisms of uh, it, it shows growth in the aquaculture development to the extent that Nigeria, Nigeria is the second largest uh, producer under aquaculture in Africa after Egypt. But unfortunately, there is no monitoring mechanism under this plan so that we can actually assess what is the performance, what is the impact of those plans. Next. Then policy framework uh, and reform strategies of fisheries, aquaculture in Africa. This is also was published in 2014. I think, I think under AU, and uh, you can see all the various guidelines of uh, this that will facilitate collaboration between inter regional and inter 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 regional international collaborations in aquaculture development within Africa and also the rest of the world. Then the union guide also in implementing private partnerships. This also provides instruments how you can uh, the, the public and private sector can partner so that they can develop the aquaculture research. You can go through this and get the details. Next. Okay. Then add, but there are other policies that are not directly in aquaculture, but indirectly affect aquaculture development. Like the Nigerian Vision 20, uh, 2020, which proposed a threefold increase in domestic agricultural production, sixfold increase in 2020, uh, by 2020, reduced in present level of food import by 50%, which fish is one of the major food items that is being imported into the country, and also reduce post harvest loss of agriculture by 50 uh, by 50 percent by 2015. Also, this one, uh, the implementation is almost zero, and there was no monitoring mechanism to see whether we are it. That's why, because of this lack of institution of monitoring mechanism, so that we can bring out the impact of all these policies. It's a big problem. Then also the funding of these uh, plants also. That's also a big problem. We'll talk about that later. Next. Yeah, you have Agricultural Transformation Agenda. This is ATA 2011, which is quite recent. And uh, it recognizes agriculture as an important sector uh, of the economy with a high potential for employment, generation, and food security. And fish is a commodity of primary focus under this, in all the six geopolitical zones under this ATA project, uh, plan. Then it focuses attention on intensive aquaculture as the base mode, uh, mode of production to bridge the supply gap in Nigeria. So this is one of the beauty about this ATA, giving features priority and also identifying the aquaculture as the, as the, the best way of reaching this gap. Now in achievement, uh, no, go back, go back. Under ATA, there was some substantial achievement that was recorded because of this priority given to aquaculture. Increase in aquaculture production from 21,700 tons in 1999 to 316,700 tons in 2015. So you can see the impact of it. And value added products and marketing products through value chain development has increased uh, through these aquaculture products. Okay, next. Then you have the agricultural policy uh, promotion policy, this is, which is, uh, I think, recently of this uh, government. This directs agricultural sector growth production among uh, of enough fish, high quality foods for the Nigerian market. It serves the export market for body exchange, prioritize improving productivity in the several domestic uh, focused crops, then uh, facilitating partnership with private sector, farmer groups, and the rest. The APP addresses three themes. One is the product productivity enhancement, that is access to land, soil fertility, access to information, knowledge, access to uh, input. These are some of the issues that I've been mentioning in terms of the keynote uh, goodwill messages that are presented by the various uh, uh, delegates. Then you have the crowding in private sector investment, that is access to finance, agribusiness investment and development. And the third one is institutional realignment, 
that is constituent circuit of roles. requires less water than irrigation to produce uh, maybe a, a kilogram of uh, food item or protein. Okay? So, then also in the building of dams, fishes is not, not taken into consideration. You find that a lot of uh, migratory routes of fish, fish are normally blocked through the construction of dams without construction of fish ladder, which we are going to make suggestions on how to go about all these issues. And also the issue of uh, uh, the stocking of the dams and the lakes that have been uh, impounded along the river, river areas. Okay, next. Then the Land Use Act. This is also another problem. Most, and the, and the Nigerian Land Use Act, all land is under the custody of the government. And the, uh, you can only get leave for up to a month or 99 years. In most cases, you get, you get short term leases. This is also a big problem for aquaculture development. If you don't get access to land, it's a big problem. And uh, especially if you are going to get you know, short term, uh, it also includes excavation of the land. So most people, owners of the land, frown about uh, in granting access to the, for agriculture purposes because when they see the, uh, the, uh, the homes are being dug, they feel that the whole land will be destroyed. Then, then, you see, uh, then the Nigerian Public-Private Partnership, this is also a policy in 2016 that sets out to, set, to ensure private investment in the use of water uh, where appropriate to address infrastructure deficits and improve public services. This, in short, uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, avenues of how to go about seamless partnership between the private and public sector. Next. Then the National Policy and Environment. This is also noted. that the National Policy Environment and under that uh, plan, they, they identify the they, they identify diversity of pin and shellfish uh, fauna in the Nigerian waters. Over 250 species in, in inland fresh water and over 190 species in brackish and marine waters. This has been clearly stated in, the, in that policy document. And it appreciates inland fresh water capacity to produce up to 511,000 metric tons annually if it is properly harnessed and managed well. Then the coastal and brackish water supply can produce up to 190,000 metric tons annually, also if it is properly managed. Then the aquaculture potential nears about 656. So you can see the aquaculture potential is even much brackish water and that of the, the marine uh, and the fresh water. So the key areas that are defined the policy is building capacity for aquaculture workers not only to enhance productivity of fish farms, but also to maximize, to minimize the risk of accidental releases of organisms that participate. That brings your significant of biosecurity. And most especially when you are talking about this genetically modified or genetically, although genetically improved species, that one is quite safe, but modified, you have to employ you have to deploy this biosecurity so, so that you don't accidentally release this kind of genetically modified organisms into the environment because nobody knows what will impact it will have on to have on that. Then also, the key areas also under this is uh, uh, embarking on massive production of fingerlings of selected fish for stocking the reservoir. That has been clearly stated in this water policy. But whether the fisheries sector has capitalized on that, that is another question that we need to ask ourselves. The national education policy also, one professional high level manpower required for the fisheries and aquaculture. As we mentioned earlier, universities. Uh, producing all kind of uh, uh, manpower for fisheries, for techniques and all this kind of thing. But I don't know whether there is a good synergy between the, uh, the, the most especially the National University harmonize all these uh, 
fisheries curriculum so that we can produce the more power that is actually required by the sector. So we need to look at all these things. Okay? The National Agriculture Extension Advisory Service Facility, this is also uh, uh, ensures a well-coordinated institutional organizational framework, federal, state, local government. This another issue is this at the state level, most most especially at the ADPs, we find that uh, the emphasis on extension is given on crop, crops. And when this issue was raised, the unified extension system was brought in. You find that they get a crop person training for one or two weeks or maybe one month and he suddenly becomes an expert to advise on fish. This is also a big problem. That's why we have a lot of work consultants and uh, all kinds of problems uh, happening to our farmers. So this is also we need to look at it. Then the National Policy of Food Safety and its Implementation Strategy, that is NTFS, uh, on 2014. The current food safety system in Nigeria has inadequate capacity to identify, monitor, control, and provide effective response to ensure food safety. This is a new year. A whole dinner on beans that has been infested by uh, maybe uh, pesticide and all kind of things. Then you have the issue of uh, uh, all kind of uh, food items that have been there. Uh, and what the food items that are being taken into the market and people consume and uh, they end up with having problems. So, but the policy actually conspicuously states courts of act on uh, Fisheries Act 1971, 1992, and uh, Fisheries, 1, Fisheries Act 108, 1992, Fisheries Act licenses, regulation, all the actual Use utilization of the instrument with those actors that have been quoted there has never been taken care of in that uh, national policy. Now, sustainable development goals. It says uh, goal 14, like fish. So, so it, it takes care of life underwater and by uh, in, in indirectly by diversity of marine and freshwater resources. Then goal two on three, which uh, uh, advocates for eradication of hunger and promote good health. There is no, there is no better well, you know, by eating more fish. Everybody knows that if you eat more fish, you get healthier. So, so this, these three uh, goals of sustainable development goals are indirectly related to the aquaculture. Then the Nigerian Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, 2017-2020, sustained by with an uh, emphasis on improving. That's the major key instrument there. Private partnerships. Because government realized that they cannot develop and the private do that. So that, that is productivity achieves a sustainable diversification, production, and severe growth of that policy. As I, as I keep saying that, whether you are taking care of our uh, well, implement Next, let's go to the next one. We don't have much time. Now, for agricultural transformation in Africa, the Africa will invest about 24 billion over uh, our support transformation. And the Dependency of food imports and Africa uh, and more value chain in areas of comparative advantage. One is key commodities including fish. That's because if you remember, that has been identified to be like that in Nigeria. Okay, next. Now, there is policy graph. Close for the block consumption and uh, so the aquaculture potential implementation. Before taking 
who all the time. And even if you don't want to know that, you don't want to know that. That's not the way to do it. And if you want to know that, you don't want to know that. Then the life just goes on. So how do you get rid of it? The best way to do is, let's do some analysis. We have a lot of water, 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 water supply in our brain and the communities. There are a lot of different kinds of dilation. So that we can limit the number of people that are the same and talk about it. So these are the kind of things that we need to look at. For what kind of issues, I hope that you have a patient who can present certain level of technical skills and compound through partnership with commercial and private sector partners and partnerships. That all the problems that you see here, and you must see what it is. And then to the company is going to come in. I hope I agree with that. We get 10 pounds, and we get 10 pounds. So we should look at all these things. If we have a farmer getting a pay here, and I also have a student, it's a lot of it. So we'll have to look at all these things. Now, then also the growth pitches and agricultural development plan was all its instrument for revenue generation and funding of the sector. But I mentioned that in the future time. Luckily, the president just about a month ago, he signed an agricultural development plan. I hope we should make sure that the future is really taken care of. Because if we use the instruments that are given in the future stability portfolio, this should be the most important thing. Right now, we are in the terrible region of the country. Terrible part of the highest level of the part of the region of the country. Now, by the time we put all these instruments and issues at season and products and all kinds of things, paper, work paper, which are principal and all kinds of things, you will generate a lot of money that can help the growth of our culture. The implementation of policy, the all legal frameworks, instruments, and all policy of the directly or indirectly related issues are not of the same What I mean by this is you have issues in the water resources. Environment issues. So we should try to look at all these things that are related to our personal issues and how to make them come out with single government so that that will be implemented by all these stakeholders, including environment, uh, agriculture, work. Okay? So in conclusion, how about water policies and uh, regulations, legislations, and social arrangements in Nigeria, there are only a common view to time. What I just said for today accommodates the new approach for a social approach. This is all that I've been saying. We have to bring up all these various instruments, all these plans, all these uh, policies, so that we can harmonize them and bring up something that really can help issues. By the way, as I said, fish is, fish is in the general world. It's much more than, uh, much more than other costs in the country. It's in the general world, it has resulted in war. We have the time to spend Spanish and Italian uh, fighting over access to the water and all kinds of things. So we need to look at all these things. There is also a need to consider all other instruments relevant to our culture and other related policy stakeholders involved. It's important in achieving our culture and social objectives. This is uh, what I said earlier. The situation calls for growth in key gaps in the policies in the uh, institutional and social argument, which include the federal government structure. The separation of power that leads to the option to comply with the government's policy formulation to be inclusive with the same level of not being The amount of officials and power of the policy will be to the Hopefully, we'll take this into account. This is the issue that I think the federal government will sit down and the states to formulate laws and expect the states to be. There is also something I don't like about the federal powers. You find that the federal office is not the office that you expect that you know that they are also in the Shanti Institution. But in formulation, take along, carry, carry along all these things. So that they will know what is happening and they will have their input. So by the time it comes out, it comes as national policies rather than federal policies. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together once again for the special advisor on agriculture and natural resources to Katsina State Governor, Dr. Ava Yakubu Abdullah, FFS. Thank you very much for that uh, very uh, insightful keynote.
Okay, up next, we'd we'll like to invite to give. Uh, okay, let's just recognize the people in the building. Uh, I'd like to recognize the rep representative of um, Government of Anambra, his Anakwa Culture Business Development Agency, Anambra State. Please put your hands together for him. I'd like to recognize also the Dean College of Natural Resources and Environmental Management, Michael Opara University, Umudiki Abia State, um, Professor Anthony Ilewa, the FFS. Please put your hands together for him too. Yes. Okay, up next, we'd like to listen to a keynote. May I invite uh, to give the keynote now? Um, from the head of biotechnology and animal health department at the Institute for Food Security and Fisheries and Agriculture Department, um, Joseph Sarwan Taka University, Foreign and Australian University of Agriculture, Marco de Benue State, Nigeria, Professor Samuel Olabodi Olufia. Please put your hands together for Prof. His Excellency, former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, here represented by the Farm Safety Welcome, sir. I also want to represent the Honorable Commissioner that has come to grace this occasion, the Director of uh, World Aquaculture Society, the Vice Chancellor of the University, fellow colleagues from different universities, lecturers that we are becoming endangered species now, great Nigerian students, are you around? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to present a, a keynote address on the fish genetics, fish breeding and genetics improvement in Nigeria. Fish breeding and genetics. Okay, shall I continue? Well, genetic improvement is not new to many of us. I remember many, many years ago when I was doing my PhD, Dr. Ava Yakubu, we always be there to challenge me about the result of chromosome engineering. <laughs> but today now, triploid chromosome engineering is everywhere. And so I have the liberty to present my paper without any fear that Dr. Ablahi will be afraid of the result of chromosome engineering in fishes. I want to say that according to one of our colleagues, Krikios, in 2001, there is a great potential for increased production of aquatic species not the only fish, brown, seaweed, even though we cannot eat the seaweed, we can produce it and market it and have money. Not only that, and that genetic improvement holds hope for improved nutrition and a better livelihood for millions of people all over the world. The reason we are talking about genetic improvement it's purely because 
of the problem of reduction in the production from the Y. This we can see, for example, in Nigeria, where we have the Lake Chad, that in the 1960s, you have hundreds and hundreds of square kilometer water body supporting thousands of tons of fish. Ten years later, we have a great reduction in the spread of the water leading to reduction in fish production. Eventually, to cut the story short, in the year 2007, you now have just few, a, a little over 100 square kilometer area covered with water, therefore reducing the fish production. And so, and unfortunately, as the water level all over has been reducing, the population has always been increasing. So therefore, we have a problem in the volume of fish that is being produced and the mouth that we eat that fish is on the increase. Do you want me to? Okay. There are, apart from the drying of the lake, we also have the popular climate change and the food insecurity. The change in the weather leading to a rapid increase in temperature, alteration in rainfall, and the flood and drought condition, pests and diseases. All this contributed to the fight against fish production. Because of all this, therefore, the cry and the need for genetic improvement so that we can still meet the need of the Nyani population. What is genetics? Genetics basically deals with identification of the traits. And when we are able to identify the traits, we look at how you now carry the trait and transmit it from one generation to the other. Okay. So, unfortunately, we couldn't see some of these slides. But apart from fisheries, we have also seen a lot of impact of genetics, especially in the area of poultry production. Some of us, will, I'm sure, we have been to Ray Hobart, and then the man there will say, I will take you to my poultry house, where you have featherless chicken as a result of genetic improvement. Not only that, we also have the cow, the bulls, and the popular one that is very relevant that uh, somebody spoke before about tilapia production. Tilapia production, either through all milk production or through hybridization. Now, if we look at Nigeria, my focus is on Nigeria. You can easily identify three periods in the development of our fish and fisheries. The initial time when we had plenty of fish from the capture fisheries. At that time, around the 1940s, 50s, 60s, we had plenty of fish to the level that we don't even, nobody was talking about pond or. Uh, I, artificial production of fish. At that time, we had plenty of fish and the uh, we have the water. Unfortunately, the second time, the second zone, the second period, we now had a period where we have a reduction in the quantity of fish. During this period, around the 1990, 91, 92, 97, we had there, we were forced to start looking at how do we now produce fish without going to the rivers. 
At that time, we were looking at how do we produce fingernails? How do we raise fingernails? How do we raise fish? That are quite a lot of things that were done. The introduction of the fiber town, the introduction of the pump system, several researches. And the third part of the history, for those of us that study, that are interested in the historical development of fisheries, we are talking about the time. The next slide. Yeah, let's go to the third one. We are talking about the time when we now have quite a lot of fish production all over the country. We now have quite a lot of fingernails produced in many hatcheries. We have few still being imported, and many is being produced even in government institution. Now the next question, the next slide, is now asking ourselves, what are the various genetic improvement interjections for the increase in production of fish in Nigeria? Number one, next slide, is the popular hybridization. And the history of hybrid production in Nigeria started in Nifri. During the time of the late uh, Dr. Aluko. And we had also quite a lot of other colleagues. Dr. Madhu in Lewadin is also here. He was one of the people that pioneered the production of uh, uh, hybridization. And the hybrid at that time was actually producing almost four times the normal fish. Unfortunately, we couldn't sustain the research. And after the World Bank project that supported the research, everything went back to square one. But in many parts of Nigeria, many people are still producing hybrid. And that has improved a lot of fish production. Number two is also in the area of genetic engineering all over the country. If you scan through virtually all the literature in the area of fish research, you will see quite a lot of scientists now, now producing fish or into introductory part study of genetic engineering. And the one that is very, very common is the introduction of novel traits, especially growth gene from a donor to a recipient. Well, we have the the biotechnology and the biosafety rules now guiding all this. But there are a lot of people doing this, not in Nigeria, I mean outside the country. And I hope with time we will be able to domesticate some of this research work. Again, like I said, many people, so many, you read it in literature here and there, they are into triploid induction now, where you increase the chromosome number and all that this is doing is helping to increase the size because the energy that ordinarily would have been diverted into uh, gonad production will now be diverted into growth now as nigerians also i participated in some of these transgenic tilapia production like i said most of these things outside the country however it is good to note that as a nation, we are growing, we are increasing, and we have a whole lot of scientists coming up in this area of research that I strongly believe in the next few years with the biosafety rules that is available, we will be able to see the result of some of this. The next one that is not that is very, very important, and also, again, just like uh, one of your participants mentioned, has to do with the production and development of tilapia. Like I have said many, many times in different fora, if there is any fish species that Nigeria should produce with little or no effort, it's tilapia. In the Federal University of Agri, Makodi, we are working on, you know, the need to, there's something we call a rebirth of tilapia production. And we are looking at how we are going to really increase the production because 
they don't compete with man, especially when it comes to their crude protein requirement in feed, unlike clarias. Now, not only in Nigeria, in many parts of the country, like the all made tilapia that is being produced, either through the use of 17 alpha methyl tetracycline blood hormone that you give to the fish, and you withdraw it just after 28 days when the fish are still less than one month old. And then you now raise it for the next six months, harvest your fish, and market your fish. Many people will ask you, what will happen to the hormone there? And I've always challenged them. If you look at the FAO, so many, they will tell you that the hormones, you don't even see a trace after 30, 40 days inside the telagia. So the fear will always nurse. It's not there. And I've always been asking people that used to ask questions, show me one man in the whole world that will tell you are ate tilapia and this one have, and people will say they have not seen. Show me in the literature where you have problem of tilapia, you captured and because people eat, they will say they have not seen. So we are in the fear. So therefore, all the tilapia is a product that can help. There are a lot of other countries that have invested and they have done a lot of things in tilapia. Coincidentally, Actually, tilapia is our own indigenous fish species. And the country came, took some sample down and here and there, and took it, developed it. Now we are buying it. It's just like clarias. And anywhere I talk about uh, pangasia, people will say, Why are you talking about pangasia? Why are you talking about pangasia? Nigeria is bedeviled with only the production of one species, clarias. If something happened today, Clarias is not going. Everybody will go to chicken. So, there's nothing absolutely wrong if a country they have developed is not is non-invasive, they culture it with common car, they produce and it's growing, and they have almost similar disorder of the water quality parameter requirement like our clarias. What stops us from bringing it? Nothing. All we need to do is to follow protocol and do the need for. In genetic improvement also, we have, we have marker assisted selection program. Now, it's just like the people that are rearing cow, for example, and they have discovered that this cow is very, very good. But they slaughter it before discovering the meristic and the other characteristics. It's not useful again. So, what this method is doing is that before you kill the fish, before you kill the jam plasm, you take a sample of the fish and you run the, the you do the DNA analysis and you know the gene that are specific to good performing species and then you select those fish and use it to propagate. That is what all, again, quite a lot of scientists are working in this area and they are Bring, and I'm sure in a few years' time, we will begin to enjoy the fruit of... That. There are a lot of challenges anyway, especially uh, in genetic improvement of fish in Nigeria, uh, the problem of uh, the seed, the problem of fun, the problem of infrastructure, they are all there, and also health and the safety of the environment. We cannot... We cannot pretend as if those problems are not there. Now, before I run off, whatsoever we are doing, either in genetic improvement of fish, what is very, very important is the sustainability. Like I said, during the 1940s, 50s, 60s, if you read the history of fish production in Nigeria, there was so much fish available until the year 1670 when there was a sharp drop. So, again, how do we now sustain this theme that is coming up now? The sustainability must be in the area of environment, in the economy, in the social, and the capacity of people to, to develop and to continue to support fisheries. Now, apart 
when we are sustaining it, just like uh, Dr. Ablahi was making reference to conflict and conflict resolution among fisher folks, we must be very, very careful to make sure that in whatsoever we are doing, we have the, the environment as a focus and to make sure that we are eco-friendly in everything we do. For example, we are talking about kid culture. For example, we are talking about uh, hormone, uh, all milk production using hormone. How do you do it? How do you treat your chemicals? All this must be done in such a way that it will be friendly to everybody. Yes. Now, we also talk about economy sustainability. If the business is not profitable, if the policy to support the marketing, the, the feeding, the infrastructure is not there to encourage profitability. There's no way you can, whatsoever the genetic improvement you do, it will not last long. After some time, I told you about the, the, the hybrid work we uh, later we started in, uh, uh, in NIFRI, National Institute for Fresh Water. It couldn't be sustained. And eventually, after some time, there was a retrogression. Rather than the fish growing now, Eventually, the hybrid, they cross it with the normal uh, feral population, and there was rich progression. So, in whatsoever we are going to do, we must think about economic sustainability and then people that will do so that the research can continue. Next one. Now, apart from social sustainability, we are also talking about the, the, what are the things we gain. Social sustainability is also there where we must be socially responsible and contribute to the well-being of the local community. And when we do this, there are quite a lot of fish we give to you. Number one, fisheries we create quite a lot of employment. Fisheries we supply the nutritious food that we need, and it will bring income and economy growth. Now, when we talk about sustainability, how do you eventually arrive? Not just, uh, just talking. You will need, for example, the energy that we need to power our infrastructure must be that that is renewable and cheaper. Number two, when we are talking about sustainability, we must make it sustainable using making sure that we, we reduce our dependence on fish meal today now we are competing the feed we are eating we are competing with the food of man the protein we must get to a level where we are able to feed our fish with ordinary leather or ordinary feather of chicken and that is possible by the time we are able to tamper with the gene of the fish that is making them to desire high proteinous feed and to make them now to eat ordinary feather, ordinary, ordinary leaf. It's possible. It's research. And then we can also think about sustainability if we are able to su subsidize the input. If the feed is too expensive, we will find it difficult to sustain. Now, how do we again make aquaculture to be sustainable? It is by making sure we have what we call in pond raceway, new method of production. Making aquaculture sustainable through integrated multi-tropic aquaculture system which is based on the process of polyculture. Let me be fast now. We also need to think about the investment on new sustainable technology like aquaponics. Making aquaculture sustainable through the introduction of new technology. Now, let me quickly go to conclusion and recommendation. Now, in, conclu in concluding the talk, number one, we need to understand that genetics offer potential for increased production. I've established that. 
and that the technologies that, that, that are available, they are increasingly being applied now in production of aquatic species. And we cannot throw it away. It's a technology, it's a new science, a new research method that we need to embrace. Now, increased food production must go hand in hand with regulation for production system and making sure we carry along other activities. Go to the next slide before I... Now, like I said, this type of issue, like somebody was uh, the president of Fison through the head of the uh, uh, fisheries department, challenged us about the need to develop new fish species. All of us cannot continue to depend on clarias. We must depend, we must develop new species. Pangasius hypothalamus is a species, a species that is very, that they grow very well. They dissolve oxygen level about 4 milligrams per liter. The growth, the growth is very fantastic. Next slide. How do you bring them in? Some people I learned they have brought it in through the bad door. It's not necessary. All you need to do is apply for the government. They give you approval. Dickness Areola, I remember when he was director, he gave me approval and I, I imported some tilapia from, from Swazi. You employ the, the sorry? You, you employ the fish, you domesticate them in confinement, and then you have your growth performance record. And then you apply to the ministry. And then you can now, if they are good, eventually be released. I know some few farms here and there that are already culturing pangasius. And the information we are getting from them through the back door, through the front door, through the upper door, they are saying the performance is excellent and good. So rather than feeling ourselves and saying, how did you bring it in? How did you do this? How did you do that? We can now go develop and use them to develop our fisheries. So in introducing the new fisheries, I have uh, the, the, in the paper later, people will see the procedure. How do you import new species? When you import it, what do you do with it? What are the type of study you carry out? Many people will say no to importation. No, 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 that's not me. Clarias, the two pieces we are developing, brought it back to us. If those people didn't take it the first time, they are afraid, don't bring it to our country. What will we, are we going to be eating today? Finally, that is the work of the transgenesis we are started. Yes, continue. Thank you very much. Let's put hands together once again for our keynote speaker, Professor Samuel Olavodi Ulufiagba. Thank you very much for that very brief um, one you shared with us. Um, I'm asked to quickly recognize a representative from Nigerian Institute of Oceanography and Marine Research. Please put your hands together for the representative. Also from the National Institute of Freshwater Fisheries. Please put your hands together for the representative. Next book will be Avenue. Um, may I invite to Pendicum address us very briefly, the Regional Director of West African Region of World Aquaculture Society Africa Chapter. Pastor Langley Badmos. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward to address us now. Very yeah. So after that, we have um, the, His Excellency the Governor close the opening segment. Thank you so much. Um, it has been a moment of grace. Mr. Chairman, sir, permit me to stand on this established protocol. Distinguished guests and participants of this conference, Second Regional Conference on Agriculture in West African Region, on behalf of the organizers and sponsors of this conference, 
it is indeed my pleasure to make a few closing remarks and express gratitude to all those who made this event a reality. The planning of the second regional conference was initiated last year after the successful Ivory Conference on Aquaculture here in Ghana. Exactly two years today that the first of its kind in the West Africa Ivory Conference was organized by the region and it was recorded the success. The planning of the conference is paved with difficulties, especially this conference shifted twice. But today we thank God for making it a reality. On behalf of the sponsors, Alakwa, wish USAID for the features, um, National Institute of Oceanographic and Marine Research, National Institute of Freshwater Fisheries, and all our partners that make this conference a reality. We say thank you. At this junction, I want to say it is my sincere duty to thank you all. All of you that come from far and we are and make yourself available today, I want to say, do enjoy your stay here in Abelkuta, the beautiful city in the States. Please, during the technical session and other activities, endeavor to contribute to the conference and feel free to interact and networking among the participants. I want to thank you all as we are going to declare the conference open. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, Regional Director, Pastor Larry Bathmas. Okay, I would like to now invite His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Augusta, Prince Dafo Abiodun to declare the conference open. is represented today by the Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Agriculture, Ogun State, Dr. Adiola Obishan. Please put hands together for His Excellency as he comes forward now. Today is a Monday, very important day to do so many state activities, but he has taken his time to be with us. I want more a round of applause, and you may stand for His Excellency, please, as he mounts to speak with us. He's hosting us to the state, the great state. Thank you. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol because I came a bit late and I don't want to model of the protocol. But the um, regional director and the global director of the World Aquaculture Society. Pastor Bagmos and Madam Ariola, um, all the Vice Chancellor present, the keynote speaker, um, the big names in the aquaculture industry, uh, gentlemen of the press, people from the University of Punab, Professor Pakunda, my colleague in the School of Agriculture, where I was a provost for five years. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, great Nigerian students. Yeah, it's a privilege for me to represent His Excellency, Prince Dr. Dapo Abiodun. Today, he is unavoidably absent. 
But yesterday, the governor himself sent me a reminder about the conference. And I told Madam Ariola that I got the charge of the governor that please make sure you are here today. So the governor is that I'm here and with us in spirit. Um, His Excellency Baba Olusha Gumbasanjo also called me. Please said, Commissioner, please make sure you are there to represent me. So I'm here to represent our governor and then Baba. Both of them are farmers, they are fish farmers. Um, one year ago, the governor commissioned fish cake culture of Baba Basanjo in Awo. Uh, Awo. And I think he's doing very well. Um, for me, too, I'm also a fish farmer. Yes, I myself. Yes, I have in my house in Akure, I have about 10 ponds, and I sell fish every Thursday uh, to farmer. And right now in Ogo State, I have a place that I sell fish in my farm, in Omeda. I sell big fish from my pond. So, I'm also a major distributor to uh, eating, and I'm the biggest in Ogo State. I sell fish feed, and I deal with sub distributors. So, understand this. Um, what we are doing today is in line with the agricultural agenda of Ogo State. Uh, in Ogo State, our agricultural roadmap is food security, nutrition security. We want to support smallholder farmers, and we want to create jobs through agriculture. And two things are cross cutting that we want to do to achieve this. One, strategic partnership with the private sector. The other one, is that we want to also support, collaborate with all agencies in the world. Is it local? Is it national? Is it international? That has a mandate for supporting agriculture. And that's why we are here today, to see what we can do with the World Agricultural Society to achieve our objective. Because we are politicians, and people voted for us. We promised people jobs. We promise people food. We promise people good life. And we can't do that alone within the strength of our partner. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you an example. When His Excellency came in as governor, he promised to use agriculture to empower the people. Within the first one month, 150,000 people signify on our job portal that we want to prosper through agriculture. We can't do this alone. So we need the strength of our partner. So we have the same objective of creating jobs through agriculture. And you know that agriculture is a way out. But it's not the easy way out because we are all professional. So we will need technology. We need training. We need efficiency. And um, out of all the value chain that I know of, fish production is very prestigious. Young people easily identify themselves with fish production. Even if they don't want to go with whole and cutlass, they want to do fish. And when people retire from work, they want to do fish. And when we make money, from all that sector, you want to do fish because it's exciting. But there's a problem, ladies and gentlemen, and I want uh, this to be deliberated upon when you start the technical session. If you want people in Nigeria today to embrace an enterprise in any area of agriculture, you want them to do it and do it well, and you leave out technology, ICT, and productivity is bad. And for young people, if you don't demonstrate profitability, the risk is that they will come in, they will rush in. I've seen where people pour one bag of feed 
in a pond. And the only excitement is, oh, fish. So what, when, when they are harvesting, they start crying. So if we don't tackle the issue of profitability, young people will not embrace this profitable value chain opportunity. And when young people do not like a thing, they also blackmail it. We are professional. We know that this is profitable. We've made money. I've made money from doing this thing the right way. And they go to Facebook, they go to Twitter, they go to Snapchat, all sorts of things to blackmail fishing value chain opportunities. So as a sector, we need to provide information on profitability. We need to find viable alternative to fish feed, which takes part or most part of the profit. And we also need to create demand. Today, fish, grown fish, is very cheap. We all know the market, Okweko, small one like this, is 1,000. And you guys are still selling at how much packages? One, one period, this and that. It's very cheap. But people do not know. We have to create demand and then work on the market. In this part of the world, taste matter. Even if your fish is big, it's not easy for people to switch taste. So let us create demand. Let us see what we can use fish for in different areas. In the United States, we have the largest concentration of bonds in the whole of West Africa and everywhere. And what we do is that people depend on us for big fish. If I eat big fish today in Lagos or in Nishan or anywhere, it's from the state. And when we started Angor Pura program in the state, we realized that we don't have processors in the state all over. Let's see what we can use fish for apart from daily pepper soup toilets. So let's, let's, let's work on that. If we don't create demand, people will not leave the Okweko that they used to raise us for about 40, 60, 70 years to now. So we need to create demand for fishery products. The good news is that Ogo State is ready for business. And we are running so many projects. Everybody wants to do business with Ogo State. We are doing we are running the, one of the biggest donor funded program on agriculture, OSTEP, Open State Economic Transformation Project, OSTEP, 200 million. And fishing is also part of it. People who have fish facilities, water, land all over the state, they bring it to us that we want to enter this project through aquaculture. We are also doing NKRs, Nigerian KRs, that we are distributing infrastructure, bring gardens, also to farmers. The father of them all is the Special agro Processing Zone of African Development Bank. 24 states bid it, and we came first. We are among the first five states that will start implementation this month. And yes, what that means is that Ogo State is going to be the center of large orders in the world. So we are into cassava value chain, rice, aquaculture, and poultry. It's very clear. So if you want 10 billion tons of ethanol today, the World Trade Center will say, I will tell you, go to Ogo State. Because nobody in the world is ready for take one kilogram there, take two kilograms there. So if you want starch, it's Ogo State. You also want Ogo State to be a center for large order and aquaculture. We already have pure aquaculture with here. Are they here? They are doing 10 million tilapia per year. They are the biggest. And we are working with them. So, how can we also make Ogo State center for large order when it comes to aquaculture? We also have cargo airports. Uh, after we are starting uh, the, the plane now, we are starting to the plane. So, how can 
the fishery stakeholders also take care of the cargo airport. And how do we use, how do we use aquaculture value chain opportunities to create jobs for our people, especially there are a lot of university people here. When I was the provost of Federal College of Agriculture at Korea, we stopped what we call um, conventional projects for national diploma students. The effect of atomic absorption on nitrogen marker of so and so end these students. We said no. Let them do value chain projects. Because when they enter, they are in year one. By the time they are year two, they are already graduating. Why do you want to change them as professors? So why can't the university and schools should explore how they can use aquaculture value chain opportunities. So many. Because if they can try the same information so that they can use it as their project. We tried it. The consultancy I got, we got then, was not even with Ministry of Agriculture in Switzerland. It was the Ministry of Migration. Because they wanted to, to prevent migration of young Nigerians to Switzerland because he said we can work. And we work with five Nigerian universities, including for now. I was very pleased that graduate students were engaged with a purpose of value change opportunity and they made money. And we come up with a curriculum, the first of its kind, on value change opportunity. And MDT wrote that every institution to use that value chain curriculum to change to the rough copy, I can share with the institution here. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mr. Governor and Baba Obachijo, I want to declare this conference open to the glory of God and benefits of my time. And please enjoy yourself in Ogo State. All work and no play, they say make so, 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 so. So, explore Oluma, explore Adire. And uh, uh, Mr. Governor is already aware that we are here. It's about five days program. I will link up with the organizer and provide whatever support that will be needed for the conference. Thank you very much.
不放。
Okay. Um, where is your dad? This where is your dad? You wanna give it like a Yeah, yeah, shut down. Yeah, we're not to wait up. Drop it down. Drop it down. Sure, you are hearing me. Yeah, you are hearing me. You Okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, good, good afternoon, uh, Honorable Commissioner of Agriculture of uh, Ogun State. Um, uh, we must say that uh, we are very happy uh, here you present to us uh, on this, uh, this uh, occasion, especially when you said that you also, you are a fish farmer. That gladdens our heart because it wasn't just my heart, it gladdens our heart. Um, as a commissioner, what actually made you, just because I think you didn't really elaborate on it, why did you still say, oh, let me not depend on politics, why did you uh, keep on as a fish farmer? Were you a fish farmer? It was when you became becoming a, fish, a commissioner, you now go into fish farming. I was um, the immediate past provost of um, the prestigious Federal College of Agriculture where I've worked for 30 years before I became the program. So some of our students are here. It's all, you can do water, you can also do a Greek. So everybody is uh, like free to do a Greek. And for you to demonstrate that something is uh, profitable, you've got to have the experience. So uh, we are permitted to make extra money through agriculture. And uh, we are setting the tone for the youth on how profitable aquaculture can be. And it's not only, I don't only grow fish, I also sell feed. So that's to tell you about so many value chain opportunities in fishing that you can do. Yeah. So right. we are leading by example. All right. So we are making money. All right. All right. Ta you, you, you talk about you are having a fish a farm or whatever at Omida Market. Yes, sir. What are you producing there? No, no, Is no, that no, no. The, the, it's the, farm the, shop. Um, I started to start selling my products myself. 
I have a 40 acre integrated farm where I have pineapple, I have fruit, only I have fish. Only farm sir? Yes, only, only agriculture. Things from my farm, including um, fresh fish. If you listen to me, I said you need to create demand. People will buy what they see and what they've been persuaded to. What to should purchase. we be expecting from you now? As a, I, 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 Commissioner for Agriculture in Ogusta, what are we expecting, no. especially concerning agri uh, aquaculture? No, uh, we are collaborating, we are working together. So take care of your end, we we'll take care of our end. So the, the job of government is to provide an enabling environment for private sector to thrive. Do you understand what I mean? So infrastructure, uh, good policy, uh, and, and support. But that's what government will give you. There's no government fish farm. We have about six or seven or eight more than uh, fish farm estates in Ogun State. The people there are not government people. They are private individuals. But we give them the land. The government, uh, government assisted them in digging the pond. So it's not left for them to go and buy fund, uh, uh, feed and practice sustainably and profitably. And if the young people are not taught how to... Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Commissioner. As I said earlier, we are very much impressed that you did not just you are not just depending on the, your uh, commission as a commissioner, but rather you actually key in into agriculture. And I'm happy that Ogun State people. Uh, in fact, I'm jealous of Ogun State as I speak. I wish my commissioner uh, also listened to this and also I'm from Akwaibom State. <laughs> Yeah, also listen to this and also uh, key in into such program so that the people of the state can also benefit, not just my state, the entire commissioners in the entire 36 state, uh, plus maybe the federal capital territory. So thank you, sir. Uh, I tell you. And then, uh, sir, you know, it's not about that. The youth, they always complain because I'm representing the youth right now. They always complain that they don't see grants. They don't see anything, no loan, nothing. That whenever government talks about grant, whenever government talks about support, loan, that is always audio. How is your government, as the Commissioner of Agriculture, going to support the youth that are going into agriculture? Our project, that's aquaculture um, um, sector there. We are doing NKS and the biggest AFDB, Special Agri Processing Zone. All of them have aquaculture components. So it's, it's about the youth. It's about entrepreneurship. But people should come together like this with the affiliation and then approach government. So we have um, um, allowance for giving us input. We've got budget for infrastructure, for digging ponds, for roads. Yeah. But if we do all this and we can't create demand for the products, then there's a problem. Yeah. So uh, good times ahead. For young people in Ogun State. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Honorable Commissioner. All right. Okay, um, sir. um, thank you so much. Um, and your position, sir. Yeah, I'm Pastor Larry. But what's, uh, what's your mood today as the director of this uh, aquaculture? Um, thank you so much. It has been a, a moment of uh, joy, a moment of um, fulfillment, particularly on the uh, the mandate of the World Aquaculture Society. Uh, one of our major mandate of the society is we are committed to um, exchange field of agriculture. So I'm so excited and um, I I could say that uh, it, this is a, a landmark for Ogun State. Why? Because um, Honorable Commissioner made a statement which I really want to uh, bust it about that um, the government is ready to collaborate with the society uh, in order to promote and to encourage agricultural development and also to uh, promote job uh, in the field of uh, in the field of agriculture. Yeah. 
All right, um, uh, uh, director uh, represent. Um, sorry, uh, regional, uh, regional regional director of uh, West Africa Agriculture. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to differ from the question that he has asked you. First of all, I want to ask: Are you impressed with the population that you've seen here this morning? Um, it's, it's a relative because um, when you look at the um, the combination of the people we have, it cut across the value aquaculture value chain. We have researchers, we have the policy, we have the students, and we have the industry. So it's, it's a relative the question that you ask, because across the value chain of aquaculture, we have a representative. So it's, 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 really, it's really impressive. Yeah, why I'm asking? Uh, because it's about the publicity, sir. Okay. Uh, do you think that there was enough uh, publicity as regards this gathering today? In terms of uh, publicity, uh, I want to say, well, there's time for improvement. Um, in the case of next time, subsequently, we can improve more than this. Yeah, yeah because uh, I, I must say, because <laughs> they, I know how I came here. Yeah. I just an information from someone I said no I have to move from where I am to this place in order for me to learn uh, from I must say that we the youth and every other person we've learned a lot uh, from this gathering things we've never I've never heard before I've heard them today and I said that um, we the fish farmers in West Africa we appreciate uh, your effort yeah and, and I believe that next time you will distribute this uh, such an occasion maybe to different states because I think it's always happening in Ogun State. What do you think, sir? Well, um, if, since you have already said it, Aquabon, um, uh, we are ready to partner with the government and even the stakeholders there. And uh, Aquabon has been a, a one of the states that really promotes aquaculture industry. And um, we wouldn't mind to even extend our collaboration uh, to the state. All right, thank you, sir. I, I believe my commissioner and every other state uh, 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 officials in the state here this so that they can call you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Foluke Areola. I'm the president elect of the World Ac So we want to know whether uh, after this uh, today's uh, program, yes. is this the end of the program or we are continuing? For how many days or for how many weeks are we still going to have the program? For this particular conference, we will be here until the 17th, which is um, which is Thursday. But the programs that the World Aquaculture Society is promoting in Nigeria, in Africa, is the sustainability of aquaculture. And it's an ongoing program that deals with, we deal with education, technology, science, information exchange among member countries, among communities, among fish farmers that are involved, among suppliers, everybody along the entire value chain, because that is what the World Aquaculture Society is promoting sustainability in aquaculture development. What should we be expecting from this aquaculture society in future? Oh, you should expect a lot of things because we have a lot of programs. The first one is youth development. What, we are, what the World Aquaculture Society is doing now is to open for uh, less developed country, countries that are qualif qualified as the um, less developed countries, all students that are interested in aquaculture will be allowed to become member of the World Aquaculture Society. Free of charge. It's already working in some countries. It's called Buna, where there's an infinology platform where there's exchange of uh, information between farmers at the academia and the scientists and researchers is is a platform where the farmer can just go on and uh, go to and find work 
that has been uploaded also to that platform. And it, if we adopt it in Nigeria, for instance, it we will have the government also we have access to it. The fish farmers will be uploading their data onto it, and every research work that has to do with aquaculture will also be on that platform so that there will be collaboration, there will be um, exchange of ideas and even the farmers, the fish farmers, they have uh, carried out a number of on-farm research work that, they, that, that needs to be shared with uh, the academia and the scientists and even the outside world to know how to practice aquaculture in a sustainable manner. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to first of all congratulate you on your uh, new position. And then uh, I want to ask you one question. Mine is going to differ from what uh, he earlier asked you. When you are finally sworn in as a president, how, what are you going to do about price regulation when it comes to fish farming? Because that is a problem in the industry. Selling fish, se se selling same fish, the same kg, but because it's of different sizes, yes, some are selling, they say, oh, if it's of this size, this is what you are going to buy. If it's of this size, this is what we are going to buy. What are you going to do as regards price regulation when you come in as a president? Like I've told you that the World Aquaculture Society partners with operators, with producers, with uh, marketers, with uh, input suppliers. And so what we want to do is, first of all, we want to ensure that there's availability of fish to people so that they can meet their protein uh, requirements. And then we, need, we, we re relate with the producers and Uh, with different organizations and we are and trying to see how everybody along the aquaculture value chain can buy into the process of policy formulation so that they will own it. The policy will not just be policy coming from the federal government and is being imposed on either the state government or the local government or the communities that are involved in fish production. No, what we are trying to do and partner with everybody is that policy development should start from the community level so that you have the farmers tell us their problems, what they are saying, uh, uh, the, the challenges they are facing and from there you will look at what policy can be put in place to ease this problem or to or to uh, to help the challenge that they are they are facing and then you take it up to the local government level to the state level and to the federal government so that by the time there's a policy that is going out and you ha now have a validation of that policy it is something that is being validated for the people and said these were the challenges that they were facing. They are the practitioners. They are the ones who know the issues that they are facing, the things that are making their operations to be difficult. So if we can have a framework, a workable framework for policy formulation and law, help not only the farmers to make more profit, it will help access to the market, the access of of uh, the products and then it will help product development because then you will know what you can do what you cannot do how you can set up a farm uh, you, how you can have best best practices on your farm and how your product can be acceptable anywhere in the world because whatever you feed to the fish can be detected from the flesh even if you have smoked it or done anything to it within a period of time so we want to partner with people train people make people make um, awareness 
there's the need for public awareness on the practices that are acceptable and the emerging issues. There are issues that are emerging on fish diseases, on fish welfare all over the world that fish can feel. Fish have, they have senses. So they can feel pain, they can feel torture, they can feel stress. And so they must be treated in such a way that they, are, they, they have good welfare and it will affect the flesh and what you are eating as the end user of the, of the, of the fish at the end of the day. So it's an all encompassing uh, program that we have as a World Aquaculture Society. All right, thank, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, the contribution of federal investor of agriculture towards the agriculture. Do you observe anything from federal investor of agriculture? For now? Yes. Oh, uh, we, we owe them uh, a lot for this conference. Uh, they are giving us their facility, their state of the art international facility to use from tomorrow for the remaining days of the conference. And their students are available as. Um, ushers, people who are helping us out. They have done so much. And aside that, they have a department of fisheries where people are trained. And I remember very well that when I was, was the national president of Fishery Society of Nigeria, students that were trained in FUNAM were inducted at graduation into the Fishery Society of Nigeria. So the university has over the years been involved in aquaculture development, capa uh, capacity building, training, and even production uh, of fish. All right, all right, thank you, Ma. Yeah, we'll remain with you until the end of the program. Thank you so much, thank right. you very much, right. we are grateful. All right. Thank all right. you.